Hey, we're here in Astoria. We're going to go out and try the ocean today. It's a little gusty, windy today. Uh, uh, might have to turn around and come right back. You know, you can't pick your days when you book months in advance and see what the weather's going to do. And we're going to take it every day and see what happens. Uh, then we might try a little sturgeon fishing. At least we have a plan B we can go to if the wind blows us off the ocean. Uh, the Columbia River does not open till tomorrow the Columbia River opens where we can fish in the river. So uh, it's July 31st. Let's go see if we can get them. Uh, it's my first time on a guided boat. Uh, I hear that Jack's quite a professional. So um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Going to slay some fish today out in... By buoy tan, we're going past buoy. We're going out past it, right? Yes. Yeah. Let's yeah, let's find some salmon. Going out in the ocean. Hopefully, get a couple of silvers and have a good time with the boys. First time in the Pacific Ocean. Spent most of my time on the Atlantic, so we'll see what it's like out here. I don't. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's heat lightning, it's going, it's going this way. Well, we uh, after our venture out to the ocean and uh, the four foot wind chop wasn't very much fun, and we got really wet, and decided, you know, let's go up and do some sturgeon fishing because uh, the wind isn't going to let up today so there's no need staying there we took a look at it turned around came back safety first you know we did fine out there but i just wanted to come back in and fish in a comfortable environment at least down here where they have options and it was a little windy for rock fishing too so i think sturgeon's our best bet we can anchor up in here and catch some of these big big fish they're nice and uh it's world-class sturgeon fishing let's see if we can find some I haven't been fishing since, I think it's been Florida. It's been about eight years, so I'm looking forward to maybe catching some, some sturgeon here on the west coast. So. You ever caught a sturgeon? No. Nice. I've caught like four fish in my life, so. <laughs> <laughs> but looking forward to doing it. What's your biggest fish you've caught? I don't know, what does a coconut get up to? <laughs> I'm gonna like throw a couple of them, just get them started. We used to go, we used to come down here years ago. It had been closed for a long time and then we opened it up again. Just enough. The main thing is just keep the tension. Well, we, we, we give up on the ocean fishing. We're established here now in some shallow water to fish for sturgeon. I've looked at my uh, side scanning here from Garmin. I found a couple of fish swam by, so I think we got a good area. I'll show you some good ones here and when they swim by again on the graph. Uh, so this is six feet, seven feet deep. You know, it's pretty shallow stuff. And these sturgeon are up in the shallows, tide's starting to run out, and they're up there feeding, and they're in real shallow water, like two and three feet, and then they'll back off these sandbars as the tide's running out. So we're in an area that's gonna drop off into deeper water, looking for these guys backing off. We're running anchovy, we're running sand shrimp. We got two different baits out. Uh, I'm gonna rig another anchovy here. Let's try this. We're using a five aught single uh, octopus hook, barbless, of course. You gotta be barbless on these. And I've got some 80 pound braid on here. So I like to go through the head, do a, a couple of half inches on here and hold on to him, it stays on good. We do have some anchovies. I saw some schools of anchovy up here on my graph. So there are anchovy up here higher in the river. We're above the bridge. So that's a good layout right there. That'll work. Some half inches on there. We're using only a four ounce uh, pyramid sinker here with the sliding lead arrangement. We like to have the slider. So it's laying on the bottom. When the sturgeon picks it up, he doesn't pull on the lead right away. That'll slide through there. It'll slide right on through. And then we, then we know we got a hold of him. Then we can clean it up and set the hook. Look. What was that? Oh, got a bite going. That was a bite. That was a definite bite. That was a definite bite. So that's how it lays. Lays on the bottom. Of course, when the, the sturgeon finds it, he picks it up by the head and takes it in head first. Okay, let's cast this thing out and see what we can do with it. Reel it up close. We're using a level wine reel. 
I like to zero the counter because I like to see how far we're getting away from the boat. What is kind of important in the shallow water, especially running your electronics, is making a clicking sound as it's scrapping the bottom. You want to get away from the boat in the shallow water because that sound kind of deters them as well as the water slapping against the boat with the wind wave and so forth. So get it out there at least, you know, 40, 60, 100 feet, maybe even 120 feet away if you can. So the line counter is kind of handy for that. Careful casting so you don't backlash. We're gonna come back nice and easy and do a full swing. 80 feet, perfect. Click it over, mount it in a rod holder. This is the Bowlby rod holder. Bowlby is a great product. I'm using the low profile cold water reels. Uh, this is the larger series. So it's kind of tight to fit in the Bowlby rod holder. Some folks have troubles using these holders because of the way they operate. I have found if you keep your hands spread apart, it's a lot easier to manipulate this thing. If you put your hands close together, it's hard to get this thing loaded. It works a lot better with your hands spread apart. And with this larger reel, I found that the left hand crank reels work better when the holder opens that way. Put the right hand when you got the holder opening the other way. They fit better with this larger reel, the larger cold waters. I love the cold water reel, works really good. We're using the Kenai Kings from Lama Glass, it's G1000 series. These things are awesome, they're extremely tough. I got a nice fighting butt on here because you're putting so much pressure on them. 80 pound uh, main line with 80 pound leader and that five odd hook, it can handle these fish that are commonly four or five and even six feet, common. Bring it on, let's go. He doesn't look too big, he's gonna be easy to handle. Be able to pick him up, lay up here on the side. Take a look at him. Denton, Denton, reel it in. Yep. Oh, man, he's angry. <laughs> Told you he wasn't done. You're like, oh, he's, he's right here. I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> he's going to be right there for a minute, and he's going to be gone. Oh, at least pull him up and let's get a hold of his head. Wow. He's giant. Oh, yeah. It's a big one. <laughs> All right. Be ready on the rod, though. Get away from yeah, yeah. That has to drop that line, it's gonna all go on you. So. Yeah. Man, man. Oh, there it came off. It came off? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Put your thumbs on the spool. And go to throw. Bring your rod back, pause for a minute. Always stop before you want to throw. Swing right over the top. Follow through. Use your thumb lightly dressed on there as you're casting. Dropping the rod holder. There he is, nowhere near as big as yours. Oh, they're in that line. You see that rod? Come back here real quick. Don't reel. Come back here real quick. 
And I'll go with the top of him so it doesn't get tangled. Yep, and got it. Good butt thing. Isn't that are, nice? Those are cool. They stay on really good. Yeah, I'm surprised very... how well they stay on. I didn't know, you know, I looked at them and I go, you got to get the right size for the right butt. Yeah. Let me get my gloves on here. But boy, they're a lot more comfortable than digging it in here. You know what? There he is. You move that rod, I can slide up and give Jack a little bit of room. <laughs> Hey, guess what? We got a fish on. Go. Yeah, cool. How they'll just <laughs> kind of hold there. This one there, yeah. I mean, that's good size. We can pull him up and get pitcher. Nice. This point, I want to get the hook at him. Yeah. He can, but it looked like it was kind of deep, which is unusual. Is it? Oh, right yeah. Right in the lips most of the time. Yeah. yeah. So for shadows, in early days, it would just be like a, a rounder almost rectangular black shadow. Yeah. That's all you see. You yep. don't see the fish. Yeah, you don't and see that. And then once in a while when the fish is the right distance, you'll see the image of the fish and then the shadow. Got one. Shadow oh, under the oh, fish. Oh, he's got one doubled out. Double. Double. Oh. That's some Hold that rod. There's some footage. Help that rod. There's Put the rod down in your lower that, stomach. It's in there. Yeah, let me slide. Nice. Yeah, there you go. See how that's... Did you hold them bring them I did. No. Yeah. I, I wish I could have... I'm at 200. Yep, you're good. He turned, he turned. And you won't have, it. You won't have so much. Oh, pressure. there he is. Oh, and Emmanuel's just jumped too. <laughs> I got that, Emmanuel. Step to the right a little bit. <laughs> 240. We need a bigger boat, Captain. <laughs> oh, yeah, there he is again. 270. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Denton's over there. Yeah, get in there on Denton. Oh wow. Yeah. So Denton, does this uh, does this fight as bad as that kokanee you got the Not other day? Not quite, but it's close. <laughs> it's close. Got too much action all at once. There's the. Yeah. Then they push back. Ooh. He's a fatty. He's a fatty. Got footage, yep. <laughs> yeah, he was 315 when it broke. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Break the whole main line? Thumb is gone. Yeah. Second thumb is also know, gone. So <laughs> right by something surgery. <laughs>